So once you've chosen an app or a method, a mode of communication with your classroom, what do you do in that communication? What do you say? How often should it happen? Um, all the specifics behind the homeschool communication. So what do you talk about? You want to talk about events that are happening in your class. You want to talk about things that parents can be doing at home. So maybe if you're focusing on a specific lesson or a specific skill, what can parents be doing at home? How can parents be reading aloud with their kids? Or maybe if you guys are reading a book as a class, how can they incorporate some of that at home? So it's really meant to bridge what's happening in the classroom with what's happening at home. Maybe you talk about homework that's coming home. You could do a quick Facebook Live um, on homework that's coming home. Maybe you could talk about um, uh, upcoming reading screenings. You could talk about uh, upcoming school events. Those are all great things. Again, you could talk about school or classroom needs that you have in the classroom. If you're working on behavior, so if you watched our July series, we talked about addressing specific behavioral expectations on a weekly or monthly basis. Um, and so you could talk about what behavior expectations are we addressing this month and how can they carry that over and practice that at home? What strategies and skills are you using in the classroom that parents could also be utilizing at home so that there's that consistency and expectations and consistency between how the teacher or how parents report something and how teachers report something at school. How often? Uh, the recommendation is weekly. And so you want to be communicating with parents at least weekly. If you're doing something like an app or social media, you're probably going to be communicating a little bit more frequently. However, if you're doing something like a mailing letter or something like that, then you're probably only going to do that once a week. I would encourage you, even if you are doing the apps or the uh, social media, to have an individual uh, conversation with each parent once a week, uh, just where you check in and say, hey, you know, this is how so-and-so is doing this week. That way, maybe you could divide your class into groups of five, and you could message five pa uh, parents on Monday, five parents on Tuesday, five parents on Wednesday, five parents on Thursday, and five parents on Friday. That gets all 25 of your kids in uh, in the week. And so parents know on Tuesday, I'm going to get a message from the teacher. A great thing about having uh, messages on a weekly schedule, if you have those weekly one-on-one -on -one individual comments, is that parents know if I have a question, I can address that on Tuesday when the teacher messages me. And so they know there's going to be that regular communication or that regular check-in. And so maybe you don't get as many of those uh, interrupted things, but they know our designated day is on Tuesday. And then you just, during your plan time or while you're out on the playground or during lunch duty or something like that, you can um, send those messages out and connect with the parents that way if your school allows uh, your phone while you're on recess duty. Uh, so what do you focus on? Again, you want to focus on the problem or on the positive. You don't just want to focus on problems, but what is their student doing well? What are the students doing well in the class? So keep it focused on the positive. But one thing that parents often uh, find to be frustrating or shocking is when they get to nine weeks parent-teacher conference and the a teacher says, this has been going on since this time, or we get to the end of the school year and they say, I've had this concern all year. And uh, parents that I work with often say, I'm so frustrated that I didn't know that this was happening. I would have like to have known or I would have liked to have done something different throughout the year um, had I have known. So don't hesitate to tell parents when there are problems. And we'll talk about the best way to do that um, as we uh, talk about communication styles. But what can you be doing uh, to open the door for that communication so that it's well received? Uh, so focus on the positive, but don't leave out the negative.